So in the last video, we had a quick overview of the Unity Editor. And before we go any further, I wanted to cover what exactly are game objects anyway. So let's go ahead, we'll select our cube if you don't already have it selected. And if for some reason it's off your screen or you can't see it or when you're moving around you can't find it, if you have it selected and you move your mouse over to the scene view and hit the F key, it'll go ahead and center in on it. Then you can just zoom in and out to get it to where you want it. And I actually want it at a rotation of zero to start with. All right, so game objects. As I said in the last video, game objects are just anything that exists in your scene or in your game view. But game objects, which is the key word, and you'll want to keep that in mind, especially for when we're starting to get into scripting. Uh, game objects are made of components. And components you can see when you actually highlight the game object and look in the inspector. So each one of these, you can tell it's a component, has a little drop down, uh, and they tell you what type of component it is. Now, every game object has a transform. If it's in the scene, it needs a place, and therefore it needs a transform. Now this particular object, which is the cube, also has a mesh filter of type, well, of named cube. And you can also see, see the mesh here, you can click it. Um, as we get into more 3D models later on, you can click it and go right to the mesh. This also has a, a box collider component on it, and also a mesh renderer, and a material, which again, we'll cover these in a little more depth later on. The one I really want to talk about today is the transform. Now, not only do all game objects have a transform, you can't turn it off. Some of these other ones you can turn off. You can't turn off the mesh filter because anything that actually has a mesh needs the mesh filter. But most, you can actually turn them on and off. But let's get familiar with this transform since it's on every game object. We'll notice here we have three sets of numbers, the X, the Y, and the Z for position, rotation, and scale. And again, these line up with the axis that we have up here for our world space. And position is just simply what it sounds like. The position of it in world space according to the origin. And of course, the origin is just 0, 0, 0. It's the center of your world. And you notice, I'm not sure if you can see the lines that well. Hopefully, you can see them better on yours. Uh, but the world itself is just made up of a giant grid. And we are at the center of it. So I'm going to zoom out a bit. Now, I remember I told you you could use the transform tools to move it around, and that's all fine and dandy, but if you really want to get precise, you can actually come over here and do it. So let's move it to 111. So we've gone ahead, you can see it's one unit above the lines now, and one unit to the left, and also one unit forward. Now, one thing to note, we go ahead, I'm gonna reset this again, if we click on the little gear here, reset position. Uh, one thing I wanted to note that by default, this is how it's set up, where a positive number on the X is going to move you to the left, and a negative number will move you to the right. With the Y axis, a positive number will move you up, and you can see them change over here, and a negative number will move you down, and a positive in the Z will move you forward, and a negative will move you backwards. So it's, it's pretty easy to remember. Positive will always move you to where, towards where the arrow is pointing. So let's go ahead. I, I want to reset this one more time. And let's look at rotation. And I'm also going to click on the rotation tool over here as well. So you can rotate along these axes. So we've got the X axis, which runs this way. And it's also highlighted by the red now. So we're going to rotate on that X axis. And of course, you can rotate on the Y and the Z as well. And we'll just go ahead, undo all that. And of course, the last one, scale. Now you don't have to highlight these to use them over here. I just like to do it so you can actually see what the, the tools look like. And again, you can drag and it shows you how big you're making it. But if you want to be more precise, maybe you want to make a wall. Uh, maybe it's five long by three high. And uh, let's make it 0.1 thick. And of course, we want this to be above the ground. So I'm actually going to move it half the height. Now that's because of the pivot point. If we take a look, this was a cube created in Unity. And the pivot point is always in the center. And we're going to go ahead and cover more on pivots when we get into 3D modeling. Uh, but just know that since it's in the center of my object, I want to move it up half of that value. And that means that this line down here, this edge, is now at zero. 
So if I were to go ahead and make another one, and then rotate it 90 degrees on the X, and then move it down, it'll match up. Now it doesn't match up exactly if we look here because of the thickness. I got it at 0.1 thickness. So there is a little bit of uh, overlay, but it's not that bad. You can also snap it as well. And we'll get a little bit more into snapping a little bit later on. But if you want, want to get it lined up perfectly now, hold down the V key. And as you move around different corners, you'll see it snap. Then you can grab it and drag it around and snap it to other edges and corners. We'll get more into that once we actually start creating games, though. There's only a couple more icons in the transform that I want to go over. Uh, the, well, the first one is just to show you that it's an actual transform one. Uh, but if you see this little blue book here, if you go ahead and click that, that'll bring up the documentation that you installed with Unity. So you've got the local copy. So if you ever want to know more on specific properties of the component you're looking at, go ahead, click it. And of course, you can go ahead and read more about it. Well, let's go ahead and close that down. And of course, we've gone over the cog. It's different for each component, but really it's just a bunch of options. You can go ahead and copy. For instance, in here you can copy, reset. Uh, I'm just going to reset everything. And there you go. Just to quickly reiterate, what's a game object? Well, if you said it's just something that exists in your game, you are correct. And you can see it in the hierarchy and in the scene view. And of course, game objects are made of components and every single one of them will have a transform.